Hi guys, Samantha from Dressing with Tutorials here and today I'm going to show you how to create a cute pair of animal print hollow bead earrings. Now if you don't know what a hollow bead is, it's essentially something like this uh, where you have two halves of a domed circle put together perfectly so that it creates uh, this kind of lentil shape. So this is one I made quite a while back, uh, it's not the one that we're going to be creating today but I just wanted to show you roughly what the shape of your um, piece will be. So I've chosen a silk screen and it is, let's see, it's uh, one from Tonya's Treasures and we're going to be using the leopard print and the zebra print. So we're first going to be creating the zebra print and I've rolled out a piece of pearl white polymer clay here. You can use white but I like the pearl white because it adds a little bit of sparkle once we put the uh, varnish on. Uh, and it's been rolled out to roughly about a millimetre thick. I wouldn't go any thicker than that because um, then the bead is quite thick and gets heavy and it just doesn't uh, feel as nice. So I'd keep it around a millimetre thick. Now I'm just chopping away some of this excess clay because I don't need all of it. Then you're going to take your silk screen and I'm just going to very gently burnish that down so it's stuck well. Then I'm going to take some black acrylic paint and you want to have a um, bath of water ready to go when you do this so that you can dunk your silk screen in immediately after finishing. Now you can use a credit card, credit card to spread this. You can also just use your blade to do it. So a nice thin, even pattern. Okay, and I'm just going to wipe off my blade. Just scrape a few more times, just to get rid of any puddles. Of paint. There we go. Then we'll lift that up and then you're gonna go and wash that. And there we go. So now this has um, been washed off. Pop it to the side to dry because you can't use it immediately after you've rinsed it in water uh, because the paint will bleed. So pop that to the side. And this is why I'd recommend doing the zebra first because all you need to do is roll out a piece of pearl or uh, white clay. However, for the leopard one, we need to do a marble, so by the time we're finished with the marble, um, our silk screen will have dried, and so therefore we'll be ready to use again. Whereas if you did the leopard print first, uh, you'd need to do the marble, and then you'd use the silk screen, and basically the silk screen wouldn't be ready uh, to use again uh, from just rolling out some pearl white clay. So do the leopard print last. That is if you're following this project. Okay, so I have some Ecru and I do believe this is Raw Sienna Primo here. And I just had them in little uh, snakes that you just roll out. Then you just twist those together, like so. Now I'm just rolling that out nice and thin. And then I'm going to twist it again. And now bear in mind that the silk screen that I have there has crocodile, it also has giraffe and some snake and I think there's also a wild African wild dog print as well uh, also the zebra print could also be used to create a kind of tiger print as well so play around with your different backings of clay you can play around with the uh, different colors of paint that you use as well so don't feel constrained to just do zebra or leopard okay so then once I have twisted that together then I'm just going to squish it up like so Then flatten that out, like so, and then you're going to run that through the pasta machine, stretching out the stripes. Like so. Then fold and roll again. Fold and roll again. And you might want to just squish this to um, get it to be a little thicker. And this is a very loose, easy marble. It's going to be very blended after we're finished so don't worry about uh, getting cracks and things it's very loose marble you don't have to worry about making mistakes with it so I'm just rolling it through each time and you want to continue doing that probably around 
five to eight times until you end up with something pretty well blended like this. Then you always want to trim off the ends because the ends generally don't get blended and so you don't want that hanging around. Then I'm going to fold that again and fold again like so. And you basically just want to form that into a cylinder again and roll and then just bunch it on top of each other like so. Then press that together well. I'm just forming that into a rectangle and then I'm going to roll that through my pasta machine again. Like so. And there we go. We just end up with something with a light marbled background. And it just needs to fit a uh, cutter of your choice. The size of the cutter that I am using is about 3 centimeters. Uh, in diameter, so you really don't need a lot of clay. Now, because we are creating earrings, you want to do um, two of these. Okay, so now I'm just going to bring over the leopard print, which is here. I'm going to lay that over the top. Gently burnish so it's stuck down nicely. It might be a little damp, but it's uh, pretty much dry. It dries very easily. Uh, you do want to dab it with a, um, a towel when it comes out of the um, water. It will make it dry a lot quicker. And then I'm just going to spread that paint around again. And again wiping away excess. And then just going to do that one more time. And then rinse that off okay. and there we go so now we will leave that to dry and we're going to work with the zebra which will have dried by now let's lift that up and put it to the side and I'm going to bring over our zebra one which should be dry yes all dry and I'm just going to choose a spot that I think looks good Actually, what I would recommend doing is I would recommend having a cutter that's slightly larger than the one that you're going to use. This is about three and a half centimeters, and I'd cut out a piece. Then you're going to need a hollow doming tool, so I'll bring that over in just a moment. So here is our hollow doming tool, and Sculpey supplies this. Then you want to position this roughly in the middle. Now the thing is, it's going to be very hard to get it into the middle perfectly. So generally I choose a size up. Then I will grab the correct size, position that in the middle, which will be a lot easier now. And then cut. And that way it will sit perfectly. And that's generally better than just cutting it straight from the veneer and then putting it onto here because uh, you do need to have it sitting basically just about perfect in the middle. So now this is done. You can see it takes a very short amount of time to dry. I will cut out my piece again with the larger cutter. Lift it up. Position it as close to the middle as you can. Press that down and don't press too hard, just press lightly, it will stick down. Then take your correct size cutter and one middle and press down. And there we go, you've got your two halves of earring. Now keep in mind if you want to do both sides leopard print, uh, that's perfectly fine, but I wanted to do one side. Uh, zebra and one side leopard because this is an earring so I wanted it to um, have two different sides. Now you're going to bake this for about 40 minutes at Primo's recommended temperature uh, on the bead maker and then when it's done we're going to sand them and stick the two halves together. Okay, here they are out of the oven. 
you just pop them right off of the uh, hollow bead maker once it is cool and then we're going to put them together like this now if you have a look here you can see these sides are really ragged versus this one over here where you can see it's been sanded down so that's what we need to do so get a really coarse sandpaper I've got 80 grit here which is very coarse you never actually want to sand a piece uh, that you never want to sand something that you're going to see with this because it's it's really really coarse unless you want a texture uh, but it's going to work great for sanding the bottom here it's also going to provide some texture to stick these two halves together so first spray this with water you do not want to be doing this without water because the dust is not good to breathe in and then very gently sand in a circular motion don't press too hot Then spin, sand again, spin, sand again. And the reason I spin is because I want to get an even sand on all edges. If you just sand in one spot constantly, you're going to find that your fingers are applying direct pressure. And so those areas are going to sand down faster than the areas where your fingers are not pressed down. So that's why I spin. Sand a bit, spin, sand a bit. And so on, and that way I will get a pretty even uh, sand on it. So we're almost done. It really does not take that long. So let's have a look. So I can see you want it basically to have a flat lip. So we're not quite done there. Uh, you want to have a flat lip, you don't want to have this straight down edge here. Okay. So here are the two halves. So if you see here, those edges are much thinner now. And so when you put them together, they should sit together very nicely without a seam along the edge. They should fit together nice and close. Now, I would recommend using Sculpey Bacon Bond or a liquid Sculpey Translucent. Simply because this translucent clay is very thick. It's got a... Um, it's not very runny. It's, it's got um, a low viscosity. So it's very sticky and it works very well for this. Where something like Fimo or Kato liquid clay, although it would work, it's um, a lot trickier to work with simply because of the fact that it is runnier. I do apologise for the background noise. Uh, they're clearing the bush outside and so unfortunately there's not a lot I can do about it. So I do apologise for that. Okay, so then you'll just take that liquid clay and you'll just spot it the whole way around. You want a fairly thick amount, not like dripping over the edge amount, but you want a fairly uh, decent amount of liquid clay there. Then place the other piece on top and press on those sides. Press nice and firm and then you want to just Smooth your finger along the side here and that's going to just get rid of any excess liquid clay that might be there. Then you want to bake that for at least half an hour at pretty much recommended temperature on a piece of plain printing paper just so you don't get any shiny spots or anything like that. And then you'll end up with something like this. Okay, and here it is out of the oven once it has cooled. So you do need to wait for it to cool before you can move on to the next step which is to drill it and I only want to drill a small hole because I'm going to be using bales to connect it to my earring wire later on and I'm just using this hand drill I'm not using a push drill because it gives me more control which is important in this situation and then you just want to drill straight through and sometimes the pin drill will do that with the uh, smaller drills Let's just tighten that. There we go. Okay, and just drill straight through. And now I'm not pressing very hard, I'm just letting the drill uh, do the work. Okay, and it will come through on that side. Then you're going to drill through. And you're just going to clear up that hole a bit just by running your drill through there, like so. And there we go. So there's your hole. And now you could string them exactly as they are, but I want to give them a nice glossy finish. 
So I've just got a head pin here with a little uh, loop on the side. Just pop that through. And I know this isn't a round nose plier, but it doesn't need to be a perfect loop. Just pop down a loop like so. Bend that up. Just turn those like so. And there we go. That's all you need to do. So now we can dip this into um, some varnish. Now I'm going to be using Renaissance wax. Oh, not Renaissance wax, excuse me. Uh, Varathane. Pearl X varnish will work as well. And I am choosing to dip it, though you can, of course, uh, brush it on. I do prefer dipping, uh, but it does mean that you need to sit by it. And you can see there how it's dripping off the end there. Uh, you need to sit by it for probably around 15 minutes just to get rid of all of those drips so that it doesn't um, form a little solid drip at the bottom so that's quite important so I've got another one off to the side here that's been um, curing already it's the one that I did before just going to bring this forward and I have this um, piece of thread that I will use to thread through that hole there and then through the hole here and now if you're touching the piece that's fine the Renaissance, the uh, Varathane coats it pretty well any marks will smooth out so don't worry about that try not to touch it I mean it's not an invitation to touch it as much as you can uh, but if you do touch it it's not a disaster then I just tie this other end securely. There we go. And I might need to tie that one more time. Okay, and then this is just going to suspend it. And then while it's suspended, uh, it can drip away. And you can just take a wet wipe or paper towel, something along those lines, to dry up the drips. Now I'll just show you how to do it. So I've just got a wet wipe here. Now at the beginning here, it's not really that necessary because it's quite wet and it will continue dripping. But all you want to do is you just want to take your wet wipe and you just want to dab the bottom, like so. Then you want to give it maybe two minutes, dab again, and then towards the end, uh, once you start seeing the top part of the uh, lentil bead uh, go clear, then you want to start uh, dabbing more frequently and after a while you'll find that you form no more drips. Then you want to let this cure for at least an hour before moving on and then we can move on to assembling our earrings. Okay and so here it is now that it's just about finished. It's a little sticky still, I still would like to leave it for another hour before uh, touching it, wearing it or anything like that uh, but it's ready to uh, put our pieces together. So you're going to quickly chop off your um, head pin like so. Then I'm going to be using brass today. Antique brass that is. And I'm just going to open up this bale and it actually looks like these two ends are fused together for some reason. They sometimes arrive like that. Sometimes just need to fix it a bit. There we go, just had to snip that. You can open it. Then you will just position that inside the hole. And this is tilting down a little bit too much, so I'll top that up. <coughs> Excuse me. Pop that inside. And close the other one over. Like so. Then just squeeze that shut. Like so. And then you can use that just as a pendant, as you can see. It'd be quite easy to use that as a pendant if you wanted. Uh, or, in our case, we are going to turn it into an earring. So grab a jump ring, attach it to the little bale up here. And this seems like it might be a little bit. There we go. There we go. OK. 
Let's have to be a little fiddly. There we go. And then we're just going to close that jump ring. And there we go. Easy. A little fiddly, but definitely not too difficult. Because uh, they're a little sticky, I don't want to put them onto the tile because they will stick to the tile. And here's the other one from before. So there we go. That's the uh, zebra side. Then we have the leopard side, which I also like. I personally prefer the zebra side the most, but both sides look nice. Um, and you could wear them like that as well. You could mix and match if you wanted. But personally, I do prefer the zebra side the most. So anyway, if you enjoyed today's tutorial, please do let me know in the comments below. Keep in mind that this hollow bee technique can be used with just about any veneer you want. So if you have canes, pop them into a veneer. Um, a kumagane, mic shifts, all sorts of things would work. Um, you could play around with the different silk screening effects. Uh, the silk screen is very simple as you can see, but it creates a really beautiful effect. So play around with it. Let me know what you think in the comments below. And if you'd like to support this channel so I can continue putting out videos every single week, please do consider becoming a patron. It would be really helpful to me. I'll provide a link to that in the description below. You also get exclusive videos uh, for patrons only if you join certain levels. So please do check that out. And as always, I will see you in the next tutorial. Bye for now.